Greetings and welcome to our monthly interview with the expert. Our topic this month is the keys for succeeding with your New Year's resolution this year. According to US News and World Reports, 80% of New Year's resolutions fail. And for this reason, I have for you Stacy Berger to share a few wonderful tips on succeeding with your New Year resolutions and with our life and work in general. Stacy, who is a business mentor and life mastery consultant, combines years of experience in corporate finance, marketing, and acquisitions with a deeper, spiritually holistic understanding of life. This combination has allowed Stacy to help every one of her countless clients to align themselves from the inside out, an alignment that compels all her clients to have even greater heights of success. Stacy, it is such an honor to have you with us today. What are some of the tips that um, you can share with us that allow people to be able to succeed even more this year? Mm, thank you so much for having me, Brigitte. And it's such a timely conversation as we're looking at our 2019 and reassessing our goals and what we achieved and what we didn't achieve. And of course, with the launch of the new year, most people are looking at what do I want to accomplish in this new year? And not just a new year, but a new decade as we're going into 2020. And a pretty common practice on New Year's Eve, New Year's Day to really look out and to set those new year's resolutions but like you said most of them fail and i think we can all put our hand up when we think about setting those new year's resolutions and me. <laughs> yeah, <me>. sometimes <laughs> sometimes within 24 hours we've already fallen off that wagon um usually within a couple of weeks that momentum decreases and we fall back into those old habits and those old patterns so i want to you know thank you for inviting me to give some tips on how to set those goals, set those New Year's resolutions and actually succeed at them. And so wanted to start with just first of all, the importance of having not just the goals, but, but the vision and really painting that in a really clear, coherent way that you're passionate about, that there's some energy behind where it's, um, you know, most of us set the New Year's resolutions or those goals in, in the idea of what we don't want to happen this year. So I want to get out of debt. I want to lose the weight. Uh, here's what I don't want to repeat. And what we think about, we tend to create. So as long as we're talking about what we don't want, that's unfortunately what we tend to create. So instead of here's what I don't want in my life, it's if I think about it, it's December 31st, it's 2020, and I'm celebrating what I accomplished this year, what would that look like? And to really have that, the emotion behind, how's it gonna feel when you accomplish it? What are you going, how does, it, how does it feel? How does it smell? How does it taste? The more emotionally we are engaged, with that end result, the more powerful it is. And also to ask the question, why is this important to me? And to go a little bit deeper, and what we do then is when we have the why behind it, we're again, more emotionally engaged, and there's a, there's a deeper desire, deeper connection with that goal. So having that crystal clear image, um, really painting the picture of what you do want to create and then understanding the why this is important to me. Starting there is really, really key. Uh, following that, a lot of times people fail in their goals because they don't have a proper structure of support system around them. And when, when we're on our own, we tend to allow the distractions to show up. It's much easier to fall back to our old patterns when we don't have a structure of, of support around us. And we know this and we understand this very often when it comes to athletes. I always like to say, you know, I'm, I'm up in Canada and NHL is really big here, but we, we don't say somebody got to the NHL, the NFL, and they fired their coaches, they fired their mentors because they're now at elite level. We understand the power and the importance when it comes to athletics and having that structure of support. Well, it's the same with you and it's the same with me. The more we have people around us that can cheer us on, 
that can keep us motivated, that can hold us accountable. Uh, it's a really powerful way to keep the momentum going long before January 2nd or 3rd. So having a structure of support, really, really important. Um, what I see oftentimes is we look to somebody who's also struggling with the same thing as us to be our accountability partner, which again works really great for the first <laughs> week or two while we're both motivated. Um, but uh, usually long term that doesn't work because we're struggling with the same thing. So it's hard to keep that momentum going. And so really having a structure of support where, where somebody um, where you're paying for it, number one, can be really important because there's a different level of accountability when you've reached into your pocket and invested in that. Yeah. But also to have that support of somebody who's achieved that goal um, before, who's operating at a higher level of awareness can be really important. And I know you understand the importance of that for sheets. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that I see is people will put together these goals, but they won't put a plan in place with the goal. And I like to say you can't have mindset without strategy and you can't have strategy without mindset. We need both of those elements if we're going to be successful. And so as you're setting your goals for the year, as you're setting your intentions for the year, really working with your calendar and scheduling the time to, to be accountable to that. When are you going to work on that goal? What does that look like? And oftentimes we say, oh, you know, when I, when I have time or I'll make, I'll make time for it. Uh, but the truth is life gets busy and it's so easy to fall back into those old patterns. So as you're setting those goals, as you're setting those intentions, making sure that your calendar now matches those goals and, and to have that, pl that plan in place is really, really key. So having a clear vision, having that structure of support, and then to make sure that you've got a plan to match those goals. And, and if you put those three things in place, your, your results, I, I believe, will be exponentially greater as we move into 2020 in this new decade. That, that is so awesome. That is such excellent, wonderful, and very practical tips as well. Thank you so much, Stacey. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing all these excellent tips with us um, that will allow us to achieve much greater success this year. And for all of you, our audience, I thank you so much for watching. And I invite you, all of you, to share a gold nugget that you learned from this interview in the comments below. And this way, we can continue to learn from each other, as well as to, ask any, to share any feedback or ask any questions in the comments below. And, um, if, and you are also welcome to message me or Stacy um, directly if you have any questions. And actually, Stacy has a gift for us. Listen, see, it's just so wonderful to have you here, Stacy. Um, oh, Stacy has a gift for us. Um, on, um, she mentions that the first one being um, uh, to have a very clear vision with uh, visions that we have passion about. And she actually has a 30 minutes um, free audio um, on her website, stacyberger.ca um, slash vision that you will be able to have and it will help you um, uh, have a vision, write a vision that is really in con congruent, or really in alignment with what it is that you would love. And so um, you should definitely uh, go check it out, this, the gift from Stacy Berger, in addition to the gift that she has for us today. It's so amazing to have you, Stacy, here with us today. Thank you so much again. And I thank you very much for watching. And I look forward to see you again next month at our interview with the experts.